I think everybody, I'm looking around, everybody in the audience can probably do this or that. And probably one side looks better than the other on some of you. Uh, so that's obviously, I'm talking about our biceps, our muscles. And it turns out that there's a lot of interesting things going on in our muscles. And what we like to do here at the Nanometer Structure Consortium is to actually look through the muscle to the very smallest building blocks known as the actin and myosin filaments. These are thick filaments. Uh, the myosin are quite thick, and the actin are thin filaments. And these things work together to enable us to contract and extend our muscles. Uh, so what we actually do in our research is to take these actomyosin filaments out and put them on a surface so that the myosin stick up from the surface and actually transport the actin along the device. And on these actin filaments, we have labeled them with fluorescent probes so that we can actually follow them as they move on the surface. And here is quite a slow example of how these filaments move around on a surface. And it's a very random motion. These things are just moving uh, very freely. And on the, the right, you see we can actually build nanostructures where we can control the motion of these filaments and actually concentrate them in such instances for diagnostics applications so that we can really pull out some information about small molecules in a system. So what we would like to do is to use these in other applications. And today I'm going to mention just two topics. So for biosensing uh, with molecular motors and for biocomputation. Uh, so for biosensing, there's a lot of devices out today in the past, I think, 10 years or so where people have looked at nanowires for biosensors, and they call them nanowire FETs, field effect transistors. So basically, having a nanowire which acts as a conductive channel on the surface, which will have uh, labeled probes, or just simple probes on the surface, and capture labeled molecules or small molecules without any labeling onto them. And the thing about these techniques is that they go towards label-free, so they don't want to use fluorescent probes. They don't actually see what's happening on the surface. Um, in another application, we know that nanowires are acting as light guides. So they can actually guide light from the outer region, normally through one end of the wire to the, to the other end of the wire. And this is based on refractive indices, the properties, dimensions of the wires, and the material, and the wavelengths of the light source used. So we would like to combine the light guiding properties of nanowires with molecular motors to enable another type of nanowire sensor. And this is what we do. Based, based on these properties of the nano, nanowires, they're really nanoscale detectors. Um, they're actually having really high signal-to-noise ratios, and they have a very high surface area to volume ratio, so we can attach many probes along the wire. So what we have in this test system that we've created now is gallium phosphide nanowires coated with aluminum oxide. And these wires are spaced apart by about one micrometer and about five micrometers long. And what we can see is that when we incubate our actomyosin proteins on these nanowires, the myosin are sticking out from the wires and transporting filaments along the wires. And in some cases, you can see the filaments transport across the top of the wires and actually start to go down the wires. And here's one example where you can see a filament approaching the tip of a wire. And as the filament runs down the wire, you can see the tip of the nanowire lighting up due to the fluorescence along the filament coupling into the wire and emitting from the tip. So we think this is quite interesting, and we hope that we can use this for many other applications for biosensing, not just with actomyosin, but many other fluorescent probes. In a, in a very different application, I'll talk about computation. And some of you may know about DNA computation. That was done many years ago by Leonard Oldman. Um, but what we would like to do is to use the benefits of molecular motors, which they offer us very fast motion, so on the order of 10 micrometers per second moving around on the surface. They're, they can operate in parallel, so many, many motors can operate in a system on a chip at one time. And they do not need any external power supply. So we don't need to push them with a force or a pressure or an electric field or anything. They can move based on just a small chemical that we add to the solution to propel them. And because of this, they're very energy efficient. And we like that a lot when it comes to computation. So what we want to do is, in order to make a biocomputer with actomyosin, we need to make a device which has some sort of entryway 
some sort of network of junctions which operate and some type of exits where they escape. And what we hope that we can achieve, uh, or what we have done initially, is to show that, that these actin filaments can solve these problems, very simple problems. As in this case I show here, the numbers 1, 3, and 5 are set up into this network. And the filaments should follow through this network and actually add these numbers together. So it's acting as an adding machine, basically. And what we can see is that by the geometrical arrangement of the network, these, these filaments can actually find the solutions to all the possible sums of this set. And this is called a subset sum problem in computational complexity. So it's kind of OK that they can solve 1, 2, 3. That's very simple, because we know the answers to such a problem. But when we start to go to higher order numbers and larger sets, such as n equals 100 or even 30, we have problems in normal standard computing. So the computers actually start to break down because they operate in serial instead of in parallel. And this time complexity is scaling exponentially, growing to on the order of 2 to the n for such a problem. So what we want to do is use these molecular motors to reduce the time complexity. And that's just what we show here. So with such a device, we have entry points called loading zones coming up from the top uh, portion of the network. And the filaments are landing on this surface, these open areas. And they're being fed into the network in a very fast time scale. And as they traverse through the network, they're actually following these junctions that we have. We call split and pass junctions, where one junction can let the filaments turn left or right, and in another junction they are continuing along a straight path. And by organizing these junctions in a specific way, we can actually get these motors to solve problems. And at the end of the, the network, you can see there are feedback loops which recycle the filaments, and rectifiers which actually control the direction of the motion after they've escaped the network. And this is really interesting for us because in the future, what we plan is to really scale up these type of networks and see if we can really reach beyond the barrier of modern computing, or even make a combination of those things in order to solve really difficult problems. And what we can see here is that these filaments actually do a really good job on a small scale. And there are some errors. Well, we know we can solve those errors in, in different ways. So one suggestion that we've come up with is to use tunnels, which are nanowire that have been etched out with a core. and these tunnels, these nanowire, hollow nanowires, can be put into these devices and used to really confine the motion of the filaments as they traverse through these junctions. So how does that look like? Well, we know we can have these hollow nanowires on the surface, and we can align them in specific positions on the surface anywhere that we like. And we can, in this demonstration, show gold barriers enabling us to segment off different regions in a device. And we can see that we have transport through these nanowires, these hollow nanowires, um, for every filament that comes up to the wire. It can actually go through underneath the gold through the hollow nanowire. And this is quite interesting for biocomputation, but also in other applications, such as fundamental nano uh, actomycin interactions. So where you can think of electrostatically gating these filaments, pushing or pulling on them as they transport through the, d through the wire. So among these topics that I've mentioned today, diagnostics, biocomputation, biosensing, there are many other topics that we can think of to use these molecular motors for. And I hope that there will be many more applications in the future. So thank you. Thank you. <coughs>